Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 291, Tanning and Aging. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Have you ever wondered why when we walk out in the sun that we can tan, that our skin gets darker when it absorbs sunlight? I mean, it's not magic, but it seems like magic. And I always, until I learned about the hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone, I thought it was, it was all the job of just the cells that you were born with to have a certain skin color in the sun and a, and a certain skin color outside of the sun. So it is, it is run that way. I mean, it is architecturally planned that way for our bodies. But as usual, there's a hormone, a chemical communicator that actually makes those cells work. So when we go out in the sun, it's not just the fact that we have cells like, like we're um, doing solar energy, you know, cells that are, ex- are uh, absorbing the sunlight to make us darker. It's a chemical that actually makes those cells work and is stimulated by sunlight. So when we are young, we tan easily. And I mean, I've always wondered until I learned about this hormone, why when you look at Clint Eastwood, he's so pale and he used to be so tan. I mean, people that we've watched get old in the movies or older, let's say that, have all paled out on us. And I, and I used to think that was a mystery, but now I know that it like testosterone go, decreases and, and growth hormone decreases and oxytocin decreases, but also this MSH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, decreases with age. And so we're all getting paler unless we, unless we replace testosterone and or growth hormone. And I would have thought that it had to do with ozone awareness mm-hmm. and uh, political correctness of staying out of the sun, skin scans or mm-hmm. scares, that, that people are learning more about that. And, and doctors are even suggesting now that you should never get tanned. The, you know, the way you see young girls, college age mm-hmm. girls, high school age girls go you out mean like tan. Me? <laughs> uh, the sun, that, that's why we have a vitamin D deficiency problem. So you have to have some sun and you can't block out all the sun. Right. And it's actually good for you. Okay. So you have to get some sun exposure to be healthy. So you can't wear sunscreen 50 all the time. But that's not, I mean, you would still get some sun. You would still stimulate the melanocytes, even if you're wearing sunscreen. That does so happen. You still get through, you still get at, through some level. at some level. So you should be able to, you know, with a week out in the sun, not just burn. I, I remember and going on now a, you can't, you should be able to tan. A canoe float on the Buffalo River, which is an incredible thing to do with a friend of mine who was in his 60s and he had on a big hat and a long sleeve khaki mm-hmm. shirt and blue jeans mm-hmm. and we're floating in the river and, I and was, you don't have a shirt on probably no i was considerably yeah. younger you know and so i had a swimsuit on mm-hmm. uh but at the time i was like that's really strange that you're doing that and he you know it was all about cancer scare well and, part of that's it he'll burn yeah so when you're so when the melanocytes that make you tan decrease their function their function is to protect you from the sun. That's what they do. So as we get tan, we don't burn as much. So we are protecting our skin from burns. So as that goes away, we burn more. And that's that's what he's protecting himself from. He would have been burned to a crisp, whereas you got tan. Exactly. And, and actually, the truth is the non-white populations also burn. Yes. Uh, yes. They have to protect themselves from But they're sunburn. protected better than we are. Right, they are. They have yeah. much better... Um, receptors for the melanocyte stimulating hormone, but they pale too. With age, that hormone from the posterior pituitary, that little gland right here, decrease, yeah, right here, right here <laughs> actually stops or decreases um, the production of MSH. And MSH does other things for us. It lowers our blood pressure. So MSH goes down, blood pressure goes up. So do blood pressure medicines have an MSH? No. 
they don't have that. They work on a whole on different a whole different system. They aren't right. really fixing that part. They're mm -hmm. they're just working on the outcome. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the things. But just think, melanocytes are what gives us dark hair when we're not coloring it. Like I have had to since I was 28. So even though I get dark skin now, at a point in time, <laughs> at a point in time. Yeah, well, I don't feel bad about being gray because no, I've been gray since I was it. twenty. Yeah. Well, since <laughs> I was twenty-eight, it, yeah. but I'm sure that I ha had <laughs> and a, I, had, I can talk a low MSH for a period of time. Right. When I and and when you get it back because my testosterone was replaced, your hair doesn't get back, go back to dark usually. Some men it gets a little darker, but not usually. Most women don't have that benefit. It would be nice, but MSH also decreases our appetite. So it's one of the one of the hormones that keeps us from getting obese. Really, sadly, that's one. So when we lose it, we not only get pale, we easily gain weight, and mostly in the belly. So that's one of those things that's not helpful, not healthy, not attractive. Um, and I'm sure you've seen people who have the vitiligo spots, the little white spots everywhere. I have, and that's a sign of lowered MSH. So. If it's replaced, or better yet, you replace testosterone, that then downstream it stimulates MSH. And then, a, an individual that has, a, or an animal, whatever, has an, it's called an albino. Right. They don't have any melanin. They may have MSH, but they may not have melanin. They may not have receptors in their skin. In okay. other words, they may have that hormone. So they are unnaturally pale. They don't or can't. Color. Can't get a tan. So right. it may not be the hormone itself. It's always about the hormone in the receptor site. You know, we don't just have the hormone or the receptor. So the receptors in the skin didn't develop, so they can't get tan. Right. So they burn right. and they're at risk of bad burns because they have no, no, no melanocytes. Shielding. Right. So, I mean, so this is, it is a very rarely discussed hormone because we're on that swing of, oh, Tans are terrible. So we crisis. used to be tans yes. were great. Tans are terrible. Somewhere we're going to come to the middle and say, you have to have some, you know, you should have some skin color to protect yourself. Yeah. And as we age, it is harder to get that skin color. Protective shield breaks down. Right. And, and we don't, and we can't, the hormones lower, so we can't stimulate those cells to accept the sun's rays. So that's one of the things that I try to attack. And also I use as a, as a, um, kind of a sign when I'm looking at somebody, they walk in, they look really, really pale, no matter whether it's summer or not. They have, they have a history of hypertension. They have white or gray hair. They, you know, the other sign is they have like a ring of uh, white around the outside of their iris. Like if they have brown eyes, there's a little blue ring. Some doctors have looked at that and said that's high cholesterol and it can be, but it also is loss of melanin around the outside of your iris. So all of, all of, we've been doing a series on hormones and the way they operate in the system. And mo all the ones that we've been talking about have been downstream analogs from testosterone. Mm -hmm. Is MSH, melanin stimulating hormone, is that also a downstream uh, artifact from yes. testosterone? Yes, officer? and when we treat with testosterone, mm -hmm. we find that men tan better okay. because it stimulates the MSH. So we find that our patients, instead of being pale, whether or not they use sunscreen or not, and burning, they go to more tan and less burning. So that's, that's actually a good thing. It's more, it's younger. It's in a healthier range than then if you're burning all the time, burning's not good for your skin. It's really better not to burn. So are there population to groups be that have less? I mean, I know we mentioned the albino, which is a rare example, mm -hmm. but like redheads, right? Uh, they tend to have less. That MSH. may not be the MSH. Oh, that's usually the receptor sites. Okay, they have so fewer or less sensitive receptor sites their whole life. Right, their skin color is is white. They're the from more, which yeah. is a spotted. Mm -hmm. The dark spots. Yeah. And they're from a, and people with this um, genetics are usually from higher latitudes where there's not so much sun. So they don't, they don't need the protection. The problem is now we're world travelers and we live in places that we're not destined for 
our genetics. Like I probably should be in Southern Italy somewhere, you know? So, and, and I don't, I don't know why my husband's German and is so dark, but, but he has some kind of, probably some Italians got into Germany. I don't know. Or so, Germans have gotten in. Right. But, but we don't live where we were, we were born to live in the years that before trans transport, like we have now with planes, yeah. you, you lived in this one little area and it was the area that you were meant to live in. For thousands of years, the average person did not ever go in their lifetime more than 20 miles from their home. Right. Ever. So your genetics were made for yeah, where you changed. lived. And now we just, at least in our country. so that's yeah. one of the things that is uh, disruptive for us, because if you don't have the genetics for where you live, if you, if you're really dark, and you live in a place with very little sunlight, you don't absorb a lot of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Darker your skin, the less vitamin D you absorb. Lighter your skin, the more your basic so color, the like more the vitamin plants, D. just like plants, people need sunlight. Yes. And so you have to get a balance. You, you can't just reach a level of fear, concern, or, or whatever you want to label it that says, stay out of the sun, don't ever get any sun. And the older you get, the more your protective shielding that lets you absorb what you need from the sun, but not to the point of damage, diminishes. And it's mm -hmm. easier to experience damage. So if you have an MSH deficiency, mm -hmm. it can be replaced chemically. And through, usually through testosterone, we usually don't replace it with MSH. Individually, it's not. We usually, um, we usually use the testosterone instead. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, then there are some... There are some supplements that stimulate MSH, but that's not well studied and, or I don't, I haven't found the studies on it. Uh -huh. So that's for the future. But right now we use one of the hormones that can stimulate that hormone and, and bring back your, your color. Now it's not going to bring back the follicles for your hair color. Sadly, I wish it would. That would save me a lot of time every week. Yeah. Uh, but so, so what if you have a history of a melanoma, if, if you've had uh, a skin cancer or potentially cancerous uh, mm -hmm. spot that's been taken off and you have a heightened level of concern because your risk of skin cancer, which mm -hmm. is deadly. Mm -hmm. Should you take those, those patients are always supposed to wear sunscreen. Sun is not good for them because not, not because it's not good for them like it is for us, mm -hmm. but it might stimulate a recurrence of melanoma. And so that, their body doesn't handle the sun the same way as it would for us. And there are areas that can be damaged and cause widespread cancer. So we ask patients about melanoma. Mm -hmm. We find that treating them with testosterone doesn't stimulate it because here's why. Testosterone also stimulates the T cells that kill cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance, basically. Okay. They, so you improve your immune system and you don't make your... So with testosterone, then you can be less concerned about going out in the sun if you have a melanoma? No. With te sorry, I didn't mean to say it that way. Okay. Testosterone does protect you from a new, a new cancer in uh -huh. some ways. But we st and we still can give testosterone in people who have uh, melanoma. But we don't send them out in the sun without sunscreen. Ever. Okay. And that means in your scalp, if you have bald spots, that means everywhere. So you're talking about the importance of sun and light and energy on the skin and on mm -hmm. the bodies. If you're concerned about being in the sun, are there artificial environments like a tanning spa or tanning bed? Would, would they have the same effect? Would it be the same concern? Would it would be, be the different? same concern or worse. Same it's more concern. concentrated. Okay. So, I mean, you so can have... So not an alternative that way No, but if you like the way it looks, you can have a spray tan or you can use... Just, you know, stains that, that tan your skin so you don't have to look white. But that, and that will, con, that will protect you a orange? little bit. That's a popular orange is, Republican it, that's color older. these days, this, yeah. this year. Yeah. I got that. Okay. <laughs> John Bader case, told me to say that. Yeah, I bet he did. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, <laughs> in any case, yeah, so, you know, not everybody wants to expose their skin to the sun for other reasons like, the sun wrinkles your skin and it causes brown spots and it causes, you know, so it causes actinic keratoses that then can become a different kind of skin cancer. So yes, sunscreens are great, but putting 50 on every single day and blocking the sun completely, unless you have melanoma, is not a healthy idea. So you're talking about vitiligo and the fact that some people just have white spots that don't mm -hmm. ever color or mm -hmm. anything that's a genetic problem. I mean, they, it's, it's a genetic 
It's just like most things, you know, there's a weakness in the genes for that. Uh -huh. But as your MSH drops, then you have more of them. And they get more and more and more until they kind of coalesce. Okay. So it can happen before that. It can happen when you're younger for, and, and the, the receptor sites just don't pick up the MSH. So I'm thinking about people that spend a lot of time in the sun, like fishermen or sailors or golfers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there areas of the body that have more exposure? Like if they, if they wear short sleeve shirts or they don't mm -hmm. wear a hat in the top of their mm -hmm. head or they're balding like I am, mm -hmm. uh, where you're more at risk uh, or is it a, is a global body issue? Could, could you, you're more at risk in any area that is exposed, exposed. And like my favorite thing is people who have their car window down. Uh -huh. the, so the, the left side of their yes. body is always more exposed. They'll usually get more, I mean, in, in the U S and Britain, it's the other side. Right. So, uh, but, but the left side of your body is always more exposed to sun. So is the left side of your face. So we see a lot more skin problems on the left left side of the body that's exposed, not the legs, but the but the face and arms and and for women, chest because our chests aren't just like here. Our chests are like here because of breasts and we put push up bras on, so we end up having a kind of a exposed, flatter yeah. exposure. Plateau. So we get a lot of damage on the chest, on the neck, and on our faces. Hands are also something that you should put your sunscreen on. Any kind of balding or thinness of your hair has to have sunscreen on it. But, but we're talking 25 or, I mean, it doesn't have to be block. It can be for, for normal people without cancer. So if it you have a teenage just has daughter to be who's, who's a sun worshiper, yeah. should you be an extremist and say no sun, wear 50s, or should you support <laughs> getting a tan to a point? I'm a moderate. I mean... Put sunscreen on and, and go out a, in the sun. And that's what I'm trying to get you to say. Okay. I'm a moderate. Put sunscreen on and go out in the sun. Okay. That's fine. Keeping kids in is not really a good option. It's not mm -hmm. good for them. They should be out playing, having fun, doing stuff. Outside is good for us. Healthier kids eat dirt. Yeah, actually, they do. <laughs> Their immune system's better. But but burning is what we're avoiding. Right. Come in if you think you're starting to burn or that's that's what really damages skin and makes you look old. So Which is why it's dangerous to fall asleep in the sun. Yes, it is, or in a sun lamp, yeah. under a sun lamp or sunbed mm -hmm. that doesn't have a timer. So though that is all dangerous. But it takes just for those of you who've had burns. It takes lots of burns to develop a cancer. So don't get paranoid about, oh, I've had a burn and so I'm going to get cancer. That do It doesn't work like that. It's, over it's exposure after exposure after exposure. So for that kind of cancer, that that is a breakdown of your immune system like any other cancer and re rap uh, repeated excuse me, exposure to the sun and burning. Some areas, though, where people live with more sun exposure, like in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. you you get older people who have leather-like skin. That's protection. Really? Yeah. It, that's always, always, that's like thickening of the skin, so it protects you from the damage of, of, of the sun. But you still get wrinkled, and you still kind of look like a prune. But they, I mean, that's overexposure of the sun. I don't know. I mean, the MSH is still working. It's just, I mean, it's just it not working just as. Because, I mean, a lot of them also smoke. And I wonder if it's like smoked meats, you know, just as a preservative. And they, they, because you see some of these older people that are wrinkled and leathery. And I wonder, you know, what may, and not. All, it's what your skin does to protect not. itself. It thickens up and gets really leathery to protect itself. Uh -huh. So um, it's. And it's, sort it's, of a it's dark, and but it's more the receptor than the MSH. You can have old people yeah. with a small amount of MSH, but they've got a lot of exposure, will be dark. You keep reminding me of that, and it's a good thing that you do. It's like I, the hormone you. level plus the receptor. Everybody's yes. different. And the balance so you and I could go too. out in the sun. Well, you get right. dark when you're out in the sun without yes, a, I do. a ton of sunscreen. Mm -hmm. so, so, But I'll still get darker. Because that's my my receptor sites. Plus, we both have testosterone, so we'll still get dark. But people who don't, their MSH is low. If they have normal receptors, something hasn't happened, or they're genetically not abnormal, then they'll go out in the sun and they'll still be pale. So really, this is something that I'm just kind of answering that question: Why do every all the old people get so pale? You know, and part of that is. Because we aren't out in the sun as mm -hmm. we get older as much, but also because we can't we can't 
get that MSH stimulation to our cells so we don't get tan. And it does, and it's another breakdown. It doesn't protect us from so the sun. I was looking at the list of symptoms that you put together in our mm -hmm. preparation for doing this podcast mm -hmm. to, to talk about it. And you said symptoms may include muscle pain and loose skin. Mm -hmm. uh, is that part of where the wrinkles yeah, it from, as you age, mm -hmm. the M the MSH helps you keep the skin tone and the and the um, elasticity where it snaps back. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't just hang down and and then stay down. So without MSH, you lose a lot of that elasticity. It just hangs. That's part of and what a wrinkle is. A wrinkle so, is like a like a, a yeah, contracture, the, and that's like no, a. That's a, my curiosity. Well, a wrinkle's like pulling in. That's a contracture from sun exposure. Okay, but you can also, without the MSH hormone, get loose skin in the areas here and here. Right. And that's kind of a different process. It just doesn't hold to the tissue below it. And then, so what's a, the impact of a moisturizer? Because you talk about having yeah. used a moisturizer not, to not let your skin dry out so much. A moisturizer is, a, it's like putting a... Um, a cream plastic bag on your face so you don't let the moisture out so that you don't let it dehydrate into okay. the air. Uh -huh. So you're putting a moisturizer does very little to penetrate the skin. Mm -hmm. It just stays on it's the skin and protects you from losing all the water. Okay. So you could put oil on your skin that does the same thing. But that thing. doesn't have anything to do with the sun and the melanin. No. Okay. That's that has to do with just as we get older, our sebaceous glands don't make as much oil. Mm -hmm. Even if we take testosterone, you get better oil than not if you don't take it, but it doesn't make as much oil. So so basically, you have to replace the oil that you had when you were young by putting a moisturizer on and, and holding in the moisture. That's what oil does. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're saying is that tan is important. It's a symptom of a healthy life, a healthy mm -hmm. skin, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be afraid of it, but you don't want to overdo it. Don't want to burn. And that as you age, your systemic self-protections decline, mm -hmm. and in particularly the, the melanin. Uh, and so as you age, you need to use more protection mm -hmm. and or get a replacement of testosterone, which then would internally provide better protection mm -hmm. by stimulating the growth of melanin. Right. And so, and, and two components, as I've heard over and over, uh, you have to have the, the melanin, but you also have the receptor sites that have to be working. Right. The hormone and the receptors. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that'll be useful for you and your conversations with your children and your husbands and your wives about getting a tan at any point in time. Uh, protect yourself. Don't overdo it. Don't get burned, but don't be afraid to go out in the sun. Go have a good time. Thank, Thank you. you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.